Hello there, Sir from 17 once again, introducing you to a Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition video walkthrough. This is a walkthrough of the content on the Artorius of the Abyss, which is going to be DLC in late October for the consoles, but right now the only way to access it is via the PC. And I've already done a live playthrough for this, but this is going to be an actual guide where I do things a little cleaner and a little bit more fun. So immediately when you start the DLC, the first thing you're going to be greeted with is the bonfire you just witnessed and a boss. This is the Sanctuary Guardian. He is an extremely fast and aggressive enemy. A couple of things to bear in mind here, folks. If you're used to how Dark Souls plays and you rely on things along the lines of the elemental weapon tree, which uh, lightning enchantment is one of the most powerful and easy weapon enchantments you can do, it's not going to work all that well in this DLC. A lot of your characters that you've built that worked well in the main game are going to have significant issues with this because a lot of the bosses are very, very uh, safe against lightning, they're well buffed against it, and the, the pyromancy stuff doesn't seem to work as effectively as it does throughout the game, so an ascended pyromancy flame is not going to help you as much. That right there, however, is a really fast way to take him down, because I'm I'm using a PvP build in this walkthrough, but a couple of things to note. Uh, be careful of the electrical attacks that you just witnessed. They will hit the ground and hit the water and hit you in an area of effect if you're not careful. Dodge his moves and uh, two-hand and penalize him for, for dodging, for not hitting you, sorry. That's the best way to fight him. He doesn't have too much life, but he's extremely aggressive. Watch his moves, play the patient game, and uh, you will outstrike him. If you need any more footage of that boss and me fighting it, I have plenty on my channel, so just search it. You'll get some interesting ones. But this is back to the Ulysail Sanctuary, and we're going to be making our way towards Knight Artorius through the Royal Woods. And there's a couple of things that I did on this playthrough that... Like, the way I'm playing on this is obviously not the way you're going to play when you get here on the game. All this is going to show you is a couple of strategies and a couple of ways to get through areas... Uh, pretty quickly so you know where you're going if you get lost and just some effective strategies against bosses and things. The enemies I can't really help you with aside from do not pull too many of them because there are mobs that will gangbang you and what I tried to do on this playthrough because I've beat this game a lot and I do enjoy challenging myself I decided to, to do this walkthrough with a character that I wouldn't actually do PvE with. This is a an an unfinished PvP build, a dexterity build that's going to be using pyromancies, the bow, a chaos blade, and uh, and he's pretty light on his feet. That's that's the the entire function of him. As I'm getting stabbed here by the pitchfork guys, stabbed mercilessly. And the reason for this is I just wanted to do something different. And the limitations that I put on myself here is uh, during the Royal Woods, I was only going to use the bow. And obviously that's a, a pretty silly idea because the bow is good, don't get me wrong, this is a composite bow and it's fantastic, but this is not the best way to fight this kind of enemy. And the reason I decided to do this was more for fun for myself, but also because it makes it seem, you know, a little bit more interesting to watch. And I know some people are probably thinking, well, watching you shoot people with a bow is kind of boring. Uh, it kind of is, but the mentality that I was using when I played this content was I want to play PvE as if it was PvP. And that is to literally play on the strengths of my character and do things I wouldn't normally do. Uh, one of those is I will not be healing throughout this uh, this playthrough. That was one of the, the enforcements I put on myself. So you'll notice I get low life and I don't Estus. And if I die, I just come back from the bonfire. I actually homeward bone and then once I open up shortcuts and then carry on the, the path. Other restrictions were, were literally, because my weapon is a Chaos Blade, the Chaos Blade actually injures you when you use it, so you'll notice I don't use my main weapon as, as much as I should, or as much as you will, because I didn't want to damage myself in this no healing forest nonsense that I was doing. So I rely on Pyromancies, especially for these big guys, they are susceptible to magic, they are extremely well defended against physical, so be very careful. They're also super powerful, and they will kill you a couple of times until you understand how they function. But all this is right now is me showing you that these enemies will try and gang up on you and if you rush into these places you're going to get five or six of them on you at the same time and you're going to have a hard time because they're not difficult to kill they don't do that much damage but together they they will fuck you up it's Dark Souls and that's how Dark Souls works one enemy can generally be defeated comfortably 
five of those enemies can generally end up in getting you killed. But once you've done this, that over there I believe is a slab. Uh, don't hold me on that, it's been a while. No, it's not, it's the Guardian leggings, sorry. Which are pretty decent, actually. But this character right now, if you've seen my Forest Covenant session, which I uploaded the other day, uh, this is literally that character. Uh, it's going to have a very similar build. I'm hoping to, to have a, a, a Lightning Great Scythe plus 5 in my offhand. Or in my, in my second weapon in my right hand with a Chaos Blade. And use a Pyromancy in my left hand with a Grass Crest Shield or maybe a Silver Knight Shield. And I'm just going to use a, an aggressive Katana build with a backup Scythe for when I get into either Red Tier Stone range or when I need to two-hand a weapon and deal some damage. Because the Scythes are amazing on this game. The, the one-handed attacks uh, are not too great because they will get you hit, they'll get you backstabbed. But the two-handed stuff, if you time it well and you use your spacing, can be extremely devastating. This right now, though, as I've mentioned, is a, a quick run-through of the DLC. And <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is quite funny, this, because these enemies will actually be trimming the trees. And when I first played this section of the game, they didn't attack me. And I walked past them and they were fine, but uh, this time through the, the aggroed and a couple of other times they've aggroed, so I wonder if it's just if you disturb them or if you've already killed a few of them, they get a little bit pissed off. Uh, one thing I have noticed is the stone giant guys, they'll actually hold their hand to the top of their brow line and stare off into the distance as if they're looking for something, which I thought was amazing. Because <laughs> I invaded somebody the other day and the giant was looking everywhere, he didn't know what he was doing. He was pretty good he was like a tourist like a Japanese tourist minus the camera in some place like New York <laughs> just fucking wide-eyed and ogling at everything but right now there's a lot of noise happening on the game because the ambience on this part of the, the DLC is, is really nice you'll notice I've aggroed a couple of people uh, my strategy here because I'm using just the bow which is very silly but I am tempted to do a bow playthrough because it definitely fi it forces you to play differently uh, what I'm doing right now though folks is I'm gonna kill all of the serfs or whatever they're called, the 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 you know the, the assistant gardener guys, and then I'm gonna run onwards. And right there I was looking for the shrug. <laughs> Mainly because this playthrough is not going very well and I was really disappointed with my performance. <laughs> but it's all good, it's just a bit of fun. And I do love the shrug, it's one of my favourite gestures. If I come up against someone in PvP who's new and they do retarded things and, you know, the battle goes on for far too long. I generally shrug afterwards because it's just like, ugh, what happened there? <laughs> but now I've killed the faster enemies, I run to the shortcut. Now that I've opened the shortcut up, what I'm going to do, folks, is I'm going to homeward bone back. Uh, I'm actually going to pay a visit to Chester, who is the merchant of the DLC. And if you're a PvPer, this guy sells a bucket load of humanity. He sells green blossoms. He sells a lot of things that, that people need to stock up on if you're going to get into PvP. So he's, he's really useful. And you'll notice I buy as many Homeward Bones as I can. And then I'm going to use one almost immediately. So while I was playing this, I was super tempted to swap the Chaos Blade for a different weapon because the the Chaos Wade is a, the Chaos Wade. That's, <laughs> that's an interesting name, but the the Chaos Blade is a very viable PvP weapon because it does the most damage out of I think all the katanas, especially if you have ten humanity because it scales with chaos. And obviously chaos weapons scale with humanity, so not only does it get a, a hefty scaling from dexterity, not only is it a powerful weapon at plus 5, but it also gets the added bonus of the humanity buff. That being said, it does damage you when you strike with it. It is a katana, so you have to watch that durability because they do have a tendency to break. And uh, it does have bleed to make up for a lot of this. Now here I go trying to no-scope, even though I'm absolutely terrible at it. I don't know how anybody does that. <laughs> Uh, something I'm probably going to play with because it does look really cool and if I could use it in PvP that would be pretty boss but I am not peeve, <laughs> I am far from peeve. <laughs> but this this bow if you're wondering is a composite bow I think plus 10 and up close and personal it is easily the most powerful bow in the game that it doesn't fire ridiculous giant arrows. Super super useful bow. The only problem is at a distance it really really loses damage and it also fires kind of sporadically at distance. 
the Faris is a much better bow for distance if you're going to be using it, which does scale extremely well with the dexterity as well. But I'm using the shortcut to get back to Artorius here, and in the next video you're going to be seeing the, the Artorius fight. And I actually had a really good fight with Artorius, but uh, I made a mistake towards the end of it, getting cocky, trying to fight him like a PvP player. And uh, he punished me and killed me. But the one that I got which was successful is, is, is just as fun. But uh, I was doing 360 pyromancies and shit like that. I was doing stuff I would never normally do against PvE. So I, I hope you enjoy the, the PvP oriented playthrough. Because there's going to be two more videos of it as I beat the DLC. But thanks for watching guys. And you take care now.